All right, let's go over this truck a little bit so we can start talking about hard surface uh, collision or using dynamics to kind of bang up things that aren't necessarily cloth, but you can still get a pretty cool result with it. So uh, this is the truck file and I went through here and this is mostly set up, if I go in here to geometry, it's actually a pretty lightweight file. You're gonna see the total points in the scene is only 82,000 and it looks like you know, several million, but that's only because all the things we've been learning up to this point where we have dynamic turned on and that's running a smooth subdiv of four and we also have fake dynamic thickness. When I turn dynamic off, all we, all this, all that's really making up the shape is just these polys. And then I go ahead and throw some dynamic, non-destructive previews on top of that. And then this is the result I get. So, and even prior to this, you know, these were all uh, array meshes before I went through here and said, okay, uh, in order for this to collide, these actually have to be real. So I'm gonna need to do an array mesh and then convert these to real meshes down here under uh, make mesh. You know, so while you're just modeling, you can actually keep a very, very lightweight file and have all of these things be array meshes for the tires. And then these are all just dynamic surfaces here with smoothness or even thickness turned on. But anyway, uh, let's say I want to go through and kind of break this file up. Now, one thing I did learn, and if you want to see more of this in action, you can go to my art station page or my YouTube channel. And if you scroll down, there's a bunch of demos in here. And if you watch this demo, this truck demo, you can kind of see the kind of the process of this. And you're going to see, you know, I, I think I kept the windows in here, but what I ended up doing with the windows was going through and shattering them later. So you can see I'm, I go through and use a surface noise to break this up. And then I kind of spill them out and shatter them and then go through and then do an unweld all to kind of break them apart. But while I was simulating, uh, since these windows are so just plain geometry. You can try going in there and like adding more geo, but glass is going to shatter. It's not going to crumple. Uh, so in this case, what I ended up doing was just taking the windows temporarily and just turning off their visibility. So I'm just going to go through here and turn off their visibility. You can leave them in there. It's not a big deal. But again, since glass doesn't really crumple, I went ahead and took them out and I just put them back in later. Uh, so now I've got my little car in here, my little truck, and I'm ready to go through and start banging this thing up. So what I can do is I'm going to, I have this docked over here. You just double click this divider. You can go in here to Z plugin, just grab that little white dot and drag it, grab it. There we go. Drag it over here into the left hand side and there's a transpose master. So what transpose master is going to do is even if these had real subdivisions, even if I went through here and said dynamic apply, it would still go down to the lowest subdivision version of all of these things and put it into one sub tool. That's going to make it a lot easier to destroy this or crumple this as one solid object then having to go through here and try and move multiple and it's only really going to affect the selected subtool. So this is a way around that. So I'm gonna go over here to Transpose Master and everything in my scene that I wanna be affected by this, I'm gonna hit T-Pose Mesh, actually, now that I think about it. These uh, these boards are still in array mesh. As you can see, as I, if I turn array mesh off, it's only one board and then it's being arrayed across. Of course, if you want to know more about array mesh, go to my concept for ideation series or ZBrush for ideation series. You can get, actually, it might not be in there. That might not be one of the default videos, but array mesh, just Google it. It's easy. So what we can do is we can go down here and we can say array mesh, make mesh, and now those are real meshes. So if we're ready to go, we're going to go over here to transpose master, hit T pose mesh. It's going to go through all of my subtools, and again, it's going to give me a new tool out here in my palette and say, okay, it's ready. So you can press T pose to sub T when you're done posing. And by that, it means, you know, since these are all one mesh, I can go through here, let's hold down control and like mask pin this. We can hit W and we can like rotate this around. And if we have BTR, we can literally just, you know, start posing. Of course, I'm not going to pose a truck. But what we are going to do is add a little bit of destruction to this. Now in my scene, if I needed something to it, to crumple on and not just the floor plane, because right now the only thing that's going to collide with is either itself with self collision. If we go, uh, go down here to the dynamics menu, again, we can just drag this over here. We can have self collision on and we also have floor collision. So if I have gravity turned on and go and turn this gravity strength down just a little bit here. And if we run the simulation, it'll start just kind of collapsing on itself. So if you want to put a little bit, take a little bit of air out of those tires and go down here to like firmness of one or two, and then run the simulation real quick and just kind of, you know, deflate those tires just a bit, just by bringing the whole car down on top of that floor. Of course, you can also hit uh, W to go into gizmo. You can go to BTC to transpose cloth, and you can use your transpose cloth to go through and just kind of 
control that simulation as well. So if you wanted to like tilt it down, you can start colliding it with the floor. Uh, of course, in the demo, and again, if we here's the final scene, it can get a little bit of a better shot. We're going to go over a couple different things, uh, but this front end is what we're kind of concerned about with now. So essentially, there's going to be a cylinder for the top that's going to fall, and then a cylinder for the middle, and you can use that as a collision surface. Now, if you've already modeled it, you can just append it into your scene. So if I go in here and I hold down Shift and turn everything else back on, or actually I need to go down here to turn on the light post temporarily, I can Alt tap this light post and I can just append it in here. Or if I want to just have it out in my palette here, I can just clone that off. And then I can go back up here and just select one of these meshes. And then we'll go over here and turn off that light post. And then this scene is back to normal. We have a light post out here. I can go back to my truck and I can say append a light post. Now we did change that uh, floor plane here, so if I hit W I can actually move this up and match it back to the light post there. That's something I didn't really, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, if you can go in here to draw and by default the elevation set to negative one, so that's going to move this to the lowest point of any of your subtools. If you set it to zero it's going to move the floor plane to the world zero, but you can go through here in the draw menu and you can change this elevation slider to kind of whatever depth that you want. So generally speaking, I'll just leave it at negative one, but just in case you need to know that, you can move that floor collision plane to wherever you'd like. Now you're not limited to just bringing in another piece of geometry. You can just go through here. You can append just a plain old cylinder and you can grab this cylinder here. You can hit W and hold down Alt. Let's turn off the floor here. And we're gonna tap the bottom middle of this. We can, oops, let's go to B. BTR, so we can go through here and we can scale this down, and you know, you can just make your own cylinder however you'd like. But we'll go ahead and delete that. And now we have this uh, cylinder in our scene as a collision volume, so I'm going to select the truck again. And if I go over here to collision volume and turn that on, it'll go ahead and calculate this is a collision volume, so now I can hit a W, go to BTC, back to transpose cloth, and now I can just pull along here and have this collide uh, with that. Now we have it firmness set to one, so it is going to kind of treat it as like a like a piece of silk. You know, another option you can do is you can crank this firmness up. Let's take it take it to four or five, and now you're going to see these crumple uh, a little bit. They keep it a little bit more solid. Now, if I want to have simulation kind of drive this, what I can do literally drive this. I can turn on uh, the floor. So you can see we have the floor plane. Um, I don't really want it to collide. Well, I guess I do want it to collide with the floor a little bit just to kind of keep these pieces from going all over the place, but I want it to run in one direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my camera and then snap it. Just hold on shift and snap it so we're all, it's looking down. I'm gonna say set that direction. So now gravity is gonna pull it along this direction. So now I can go through here and I can say, okay, run that simulation and then gravity is gonna take over and just run my truck uh, into here. So now all of these pieces are gonna collide with gravity pulling it in the Z direction. Of course, for the most control, like I said, go to BTC to transpose cloth. You can push this in and you can start crumpling these things. Now, you can also do it based on visibility. So if I want this piece right here, if I hold down control shift and just or even masking, I can go through here, and I can just pull this piece off and crumple it first. Of course, if I want the whole truck to move, masking's not gonna work, but I can hit, I can just tap off to get rid of my transpose, control drag to unmask, and control shift tap this. Actually, the, probably the easiest thing is just hit W and then control tap anything that you wanna be unmasked. But for visibility, while well, we're, let's go ahead and uh, reset this, just reset this to world axis with this little back arrow and then go to Unmesh Mess Center was this teardrop one. As we're moving this forward and it's like, okay, this is all crumpling. You know what? This is too much firmness on this hood here. I'm gonna hit Q, hold down Control Shift to isolate this visibility. I'm gonna say, give me a firmness of two and then hit W again. And now I can just crumple this visible mesh with a firmness of two. I can Control Drag to invert my selection. And then I can say, you know what? We'll crank this one back up to four and then I can continue crumpling and then I can bring everything else back and now I've controlled you know, the level of firmness on a per object basis. Now if I undo all this, you're gonna see we kinda did leave out self-collision, and self-collision is important because you don't want meshes, if it's something's colliding with a collision surface, you also want it to be aware of itself. However, since I modeled this thing and it's all these pieces are kinda touching each other, as soon as I turn on like self-collision of one and I run it, uh, all those pieces are gonna start pushing away from each other. 
So it's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but you can, again, you can kind of time it so that maybe you go through here, you turn off self-collision as you're just kind of driving and doing the initial crumple, and then you can turn self-collision on and then continue, and then these things will start, again, colliding with each other. And of course, you can push this all the way through and you'll see, you know, with self-collision on very high, you know, these pieces are going to start, like, you know, bouncing off each other. Like so. And just like anything else, any of the other cloth dynamic stuff, uh, the faster you go, the less time it's going to have to calculate. So if you go too fast, it may not even calculate the collision volume. It may not have time. So again, you can go up here, you can crank up your simulation iterations, or you can simply slow down uh, how fast you're moving through the scene. So again, maybe I'll turn self-collision down to zero. Uh, firmness at three seems to be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and move this forward. If you need to, you can also like, you know, back this off, rotate it around a little bit, maybe have it come in from the side, like so. Maybe turn on a little self-collision, move this forward a little bit, have it kind of crumple down the body. And then for the top part here, that was essentially just taking this collision volume. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it off. I'm going to you know, if it breaks in the middle, let's go back to BTR for a regular transpose. Let's say this is where it snaps. I can go through here and set, you know, I don't have to bring it in. I can set that collision volume here. I'll tap here. You can say recalculate. And then now as I pull this up, boom, it's going to crumple. Oops, BTC. Now it's going to crumple uh, with that collision volume. And you know what? Let's go ahead and turn off gravity too. and collide this back in with the floor, and then that's the uh, final result. Now another interesting thing is when we go to over here, we're going to see we have transpose master and we have t-pose sub t pose sub t, there's a layer option. So when I send these back, we already have an original vert position where everything is just pristine. Uh, and then what we've done to it is we've crumpled it up. So if you want to use a layer to dial back or use a slider on that layer to kind of go, you know what, this is too crumpled, I want to crumple it back, you can use layers and morph targets for that. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is this is the original position of those verts. So if I wanted to use a layer, you, don't, you won't want to move these verts forward in space, like transposing it into the pole. What you're going to want to do is take this pole, move it with BTR, move it backwards in place to where the final resting point is going to be. Then you can back the truck up and then run into it so that the final result, it's a little convoluted, but the final result's going to be your verts haven't changed in the Z direction very much or the forward direction very much. It's just basically crumpled in place and then your layers will be a little bit more effective so you won't have that forward movement in your verts. Now, or maybe that's not useful at all, but just figured I'd throw it out there just in case. Another option, if you go back and watch the previous videos, we could have been recording this as an MDD file. So again, if you go down here to the layer menu, there's a new record deformation animation. So you can actually have a playback up here. If you go in here to movie timeline show, you could you could have recorded this entire thing and then pinpointed using a timeline to kind of stop and start this animation. So something else you can give it, you can uh, give a try. But anyway, if I'm ready to go, I don't need these poles in my scene anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these out of here. And we'll go back here to movie timeline show off. And then to send all of this vert information back, all this crumpled information, we can go over here to, again, transpose, transpose the sub T, and we'll just click that button. And that's going to go through all of my sub tools and update all of them. So now here's all my crumpled mesh. And again, we still have all of our dynamic properties on here. So here's my original mesh that I crumpled up and then everything dynamic applied after that. So this is the final result of our wreck. And then if we want to go through here and turn everything else back on, we have the tanks and the light post. Now the tanks I'm going to do in a separate video. But here's the rest of that scene. And now, you know, it looks like it's slammed into that post. And we're good to go. Now, of course, this isn't real geometry just yet. If you did want to go through here and fine tune this, you can say dynamic apply. Now you have real geometry. If you did want, you know, we have post subdiv turned on. So if you wanted to turn that off and then say uh, apply, now you have subdivisions history to go all the way back through here and then now you can go through here again with a B C K with your cloth hook brush and you can go through here. One thing I forgot is that uh, the active points are set to 719 so those simulations are going to turn off. I can crank this up to compensate but what I can also do is I can just move this down so that now in like subdivision level 4 uh, we're under that threshold and now these cloth brushes 
will go ahead and work. So now I can use this nudge cloth or BCK uh, cloth hook or something like this to go through and again just kind of refine that look that I'm going for. And you don't have to stick with simulation brushes either. You can go in here with your clay brush, you can go in here with like trim dynamic or pinch if you want to go through here and again just kind of refine this. And you can also use that new macro we have and go in here to macro. Let's go up to our highest subdivision level, say macro enhanced details and that'll go through and kind of crisp that up a little bit and then we'll have a little bit of so there's the enhancement here so we can you know, dial this down or we can even over crank it a little bit if we want and we can say bake all and then we have those details kind of baked into our mesh